Yeah. Yeah. Gavin Reese rematching Gary Buckland. Yeah. What looking back at the first fight, I can remember you telling me if Gavin listens, you know, he'll win, he'll win comfortably. If he yeah. doesn't, it'll be a great fight. And yeah. you know, it was a great fight, wasn't it? Mm, it was. I mean, he listened. You know, he was trying to use the ring. Um, first sort of four, six rounds, he was trying to use the ring, but he just didn't have the legs. Like, um, you know, no see whether Gavin struggles to make weight, and I think he does a lot of running to make that weight the last sort of week, and then he just killed his legs. But you know, having said that, um, you know, it was my decision at the end of about the fifth round, I think, just to stop using the ring and just to stand there and have a punch up because I think mean, he hits harder than Gary. Um, and you know, I thought he'd come out on top. He had a he had a really really bad sort of middle of the fight where he died. I thought I was going to have to pull him out, but then all of a sudden. It was just like someone had just sort of put put the, put the fuel in him, put the diesel in, and uh, he had a he had a second win, won the tenth, eleventh, possibly won the won the last round as well. I thought that he he, uh, he won the fight by doing that, but as I say, all all, all credit to Gary. You know, he made it a close fight, and, and he's got the heart of a lion, just like Gavin has, and uh, the decision went his way. But you know, that's, we just got to move on from that now and try and get the victory this time. Looking like a Gavin, how he finished the fight, that's you know, arguably the strongest he's finished the fight for a while. And there's always yeah. been like that question of stamina, cause, you know, fights like the Andy Murray fight where you know, he didn't finish him so good, he seems to have corrected that side of his game. No, I don't know, I don't think there's ever been a stamina problem because it's about 15 rounds in here, it's not that, mm. it's just that last, that last sort of four or five pound, it just takes out of his legs. It's never been a stamina problem with Gavin, you know, and... Uh, I think people have always made that mistake and, oh, you know, is he going to die after six or seven rounds? You know, it's, it's never been a stamina problem, it's always been a weight thing with his legs. And um, after all these fights now, perhaps he can get it right <laughs> at last, I don't know. But, uh, what, I, I would say, what type of fight do you expect against Gary? But exactly. you, you know him inside out before the last fight. And I think Gary can only fight one way. I think Gavin can fight a, a, a number of ways, but with with I know I said Gary can only fight one way, but when he keeps coming and he you know he's just so so strong, keeps coming, keeps coming, it's hard it's hard not to fight back, isn't it? So I think, you know, he's always gonna excuse me, he's always gonna be in tough fights, Gary. Um, I just hope that uh, Gavin can get a better this time. On the undercard, Alex Hughes making his debut. A lot of people well, a lot of people from his local area know about him, but the wider boxing community don't. Can you tell us about Al Alex? Um, failed his brain scan, signed with, I saw him when he was 16, come to the gym and, um, and beat up a couple of my pros. Um, I said, how old are you? He said, 16. I went, yeah. Turns out he was 16. Um, signed with me on his 18th birthday, failed his brain scan. I thought, oh, jeez. Two years later, um, after seeing um, three different neurologists, the board are now happy that um, he's he's okay to pursue his career, which excites me. You know, he's been in a gym with me now for what, three years. Uh, the good thing is when he failed his brain scan, he didn't go away and, he didn't go away and, um, and just pack in. He, he stayed in the gym um, and he, he carried on sparring with the boys and he carried on, you know, coming and working in the gym. So um, he's a lot better two years later than when he would have made his debut when he was eight. He's a lot better fighter, a lot, lot more rounded fighter. Um, very, very good kid, and I've got big plans for him. What type of style does he have? Um, they call him Lee Saudi, the Welsh Mayweather, I think, don't they? Until you see this kid. He's very, he's very similar to, um, he's very similar to, you know, he's just, he's quite flashy, hands are quite low, um, he's a reaction fighter, so he, he, he uses jab, but then he waits for someone to commit on the count, counters, and he's very clever, he doesn't get hit a lot. Maybe a problem against a journeyman, because they don't tend to throw a lot. No, this is this is the uh, thing that I put into it because um, I said, Jesus, Al, you know, you've got to start throwing punches. You know, you can't just hit someone when they, you know, when they when they try to punch you. You know, otherwise, if you, you know, you fight a jury, it'll be a nil-nil draw. So, no, he's using his jab really good now, and um, I'm really excited. And you know, obviously, Eddie's agreed to put him on. I've got a good relationship with Matt Room, and you know, when I say I've got a good fighter, they. Uh, they always give him a chance to sort of show, show off their skills. He's got one of the best nicknames in boxing as well. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Jesus, Alex, bad news, Hughes. Uh, that'll, give, uh, that'll give people a good laugh, but um, 
whether it's bad news or, or good news or not, I don't know. You know, I guess we'll see on the 17th. But as I say, I, you know, I'm, I'm really excited and um, I'm looking forward to seeing him make his debut. Your cruiserweight prospect Lloyd Davis as well. What can you tell us about Lloyd? Um, Lloyd, uh, Lloyd fancied his change. He had one fight. I think he was having uh, he's having some management issues. I don't really know. Basically approached me. Um, I had to take a look at him, and I like what I see. You know, I like his attitude. I think he'd do some good things. What we got to do now is get him fit. Um, I did have him on the Sanagar bill back in, in Merthyr um, back last month, and he got a virus. Um, so we had to pull him out because he couldn't go in the ring like he was. Um, so we just got to get fit now, and I got to get him on a bill and, and start sort of um, making him progress, progress up the rank and as a cruiserweight. I think that's maybe the one thing holding Lloyd back, probably the same in the amateurs as well. He struggles to get fights, or he has struggled in the past to get fights. Well, he won't, he won't struggle to get fights. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, Sammy Simmons puts his bills on in, in Tyler's town, in Newport. And so um, I can always get him on them, but you know, obviously, we've got a ticket allocation to sell on them. So Lloyd's a good ticket seller anyway, so um, he, should, he should be okay. But um, Dale Evans is also, also on this. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Dale. Um, Eddie said about putting Dale in a British title eliminator. Um, I wasn't really, not that I'm not confident in Dale, but Dale's done one six rounder and one eight rounder. And I just think the jump, the jump to a ten round British title eliminator would probably be just a little bit too soon. So we put him in an eight rounder against an opponent to be named, the famous uh, TBA. So um, just, just waiting for, for Neil Bowers to get. Get, get an opponent at, um, for Dale, and um, you know we saw in his last fight against Eric Archien that um, he's a good, he's a good kid. People don't know how hard he is yet, but um, they'll soon find out when he cracks someone on the butt and sends him out for about 20 minutes. Look, looking at his last fight, it was you know it was on it was on the main Sky Show as well. So yeah. even though he'd been on Prize Fighter, it felt like he'd broken through again because he'd lost a bit of momentum from Prize Fighter yeah. to that show. So he. You know, he put himself back on the map with that yeah, performance. Yeah, he did. I mean, he, he lost it. I think he, um, I think Dale admitted to him himself that um, I think he, uh, he drank a, a bit too much beer and enjoyed the nightlife a little bit too much after after Prize Fighter. He's a kid, a twenty-year-old kid who, who started having a little bit of attention, and uh, who can blame him for that? But you know, he had a fight against William Warburton, and um, he's he looked, a good journeyman, William Warburton. He looked great for three rounds. And then he looked like someone had stuck a knife in. Yeah. This is where he needed to learn. You know, he's a big puncher, but he was loading up for those three rounds. And I just said, look, you have to slow down because nobody can load up the way you're doing for six rounds. And he saw what I meant. He won the fight by a point. And um, you know, I think lost. You know, maybe a lot of people lost a bit of faith in him. Um, but then, you know, when when I had the chance, then Neil Bow was offered me an Eric Archie for him, and I just. Thought of it, I said, "Yeah, no problem," because he'll beat Archie. I thought he would, but as it was, he beat, he beat him a lot. He beat him a lot easier than what I thought he would. You know, I had him six rounds too. Um, what the referee was scoring, I don't know. 57, 50, 58, 50, 78, 76, 75, I think it was. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. One point, but um, I thought he won the fight quite clearly, and. Um, so Dale, Dale's a very, another very, very good kid. And um, uh, after this eight round, and I think we'll be looking towards the British title eliminator that, that we, we originally spoke, spoke about. Do you know, with the win over Ochin at the time, Ochin was, although he'd lost to Liam Smith, he, you know, yeah. he, was, a bit, he was a pretty decent name at the time, yeah. wasn't he? Of course, yeah. So where, where do you move on you know, in terms of opponents? What level of opponent That's do you put question. Dale back in? With? It's a good question, but I mean, look what they've done with Eubank Junior. Eubank Jr. beat a couple of good kids and then they've offered him a British title fight. <coughs> and it's not happened because I think they want to keep him back and they want to go at their own pace. They want to give him the right experience at the right time and who can blame them for that? And that's looking after their fighter. And I think that's what, what to do with Dale. You know, his first eight rounder, he boxes a former British title challenger in Eric Archie and, and beats him quite comfortably on points. What do you do with him after that? Do you, do you swing him straight in? No, definitely not, because he's a young kid, and I, I just don't think he's got the experience in, to, to go into a British title eliminator. But if he does another eight round and now and gets you know a good six, seven, eight rounds under his belt, then maybe you can say yeah, he is ready for that against the right opponent.